hello Sagittarius, and welcome to Pluto in a Strange Land, <clears throat> your 2023 spring reading. My name is Eric Francis, your astrologer, for the next 45 minutes or however many signs you're going to watch through this uh, process, this journey around the zodiac, uh, this reading being primarily dedicated to Pluto ingressing Aquarius and you know re reading that particular thing for all the signs, but uh, there's quite a bit else going on, and especially quite a bit else going on for Sagittarius. I want to begin uh, talking by talking about the experience of Mars retrograde in the seventh house that you have been through, um, which has gone, uh, goes all the way back to August of 2022, around August 20th, when um, Mars entered Gemini and then uh, went, you know, almost out to the end of Gemini, station retrograde in October, uh, went most of the way back to the beginning of Gemini and then stationed direct in January. Now it's working its way back through your opposite sign, meaning your relationship sign. And today is one of the peak moments of, uh, of, of that whole journey because, um, as I speak to you, I, I have this um, a kind of uh, odd feeling that I've had all day, and it is uh, uh, a, a bit of the Mars-Neptune square coming across uh, tele telepathically. It, it's it, it almost feels like a, uh, a a severe energy drain, or like I don't have confidence in my own ability to assert myself. Uh, I'll probably do okay, but this is astrology that's been tr tremendously influential to you this entire time, and I think has been uh, also descriptive of a number of different conflicts you may have experienced and uh, a, a sense of uncertainty in your relationships and possibly uh, a sense that uh, you know you, you may not necessarily even belong in your relationships uh, or or at you know best that they have you having a hard time figuring out where people are coming from and that would be a perfectly natural feeling to have because uh, mars has ma made this uh, retrograde process in a very complicated pattern by making these three squares to neptune uh, the third of which is is today now the thing about this is that the Seventh house. Let's let's just let's just get a, 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 a visual in the chart here. Here's you, Sagittarius. So the whole first house represents uh, Sagittarius and your house and, and whatever's in it, and then the ruling planet of Sag, which is Jupiter. And here's your opposite sign, Gemini. In the seventh, see there, little seventh, first house, seventh house, and so they go across like that. And the the seventh is your environment, but it's also the zone of projection. It it is it is w w where you stand, looking out at your chart, meaning looking out at your life. And in in here has been Mars going back and forth. For, for seven months. And in the process of doing so, Mars has been making a series of squares to Neptune. And Neptune is moving through your fourth house. The fourth house is the house of security and your, your, your sense of belonging, your sense of feeling safe, your sense of feeling accepted. And Neptune does not make this any easier. Neptune makes it, in fact, quite difficult in, in the fourth, and you already have Pisces there. Uh, Pisces does not let, lend itself well to easy comprehension, um, and, and, and it is also a highly emotional sign that can be subject to what seem like almost like very subtle whims. Or it can be a cloudy day, and, uh, and, and, and you you're profoundly influenced by, by that in some way that's just not proportional to the fact that there are, are, you know, that there's merely cloud cover. 
and Neptune can ex exaggerate this, and it's been there for quite a long time. It's been there since 2011. And the scenario with Neptune through the fourth is that it really doesn't ever leave you feeling confident of anyone, anything, or yourself. And, and second, the presence of Neptune uh, in, the, in the fourth can be um, evocative of qu quite a bit of insecurity, but also a sense of isolation. Um, it, can, it can feel like even like there's nobody that you can relate to in your home or, or that there's no one who is especially intimate with you or, or who understands you. And then when you, when you combine that with a, a factor in the seventh house of, of, of relationships, a, a factor in the seventh should be fairly available. There's a number of complications and wrinkles that have come with Mars, one of which being that it is being run through one of Mercury's signs. That, that is Gemini. There's, there's nothing straightforward about a sign that's dualistic and multifaceted as Gemini, particularly when activated by Mars. The retrograde confuses matters because it, it, it makes it seem like you can't ever tell or trust where someone is coming from. Uh, and then finally, the squares to Neptune uh, can provoke quite a bit of insecurity. But the thing is uh, that here, here's where the projection factor of the seventh house becomes very important because the, the, the circumstances that seem to be provoking insecurity are provoking your insecurity, your questions about belonging and your questions about whether you know you, you are in a safe space. And they are yours. That's the thing. They, they, they long predate the presence of Mars in your seventh house. Mars is just coming along to provide kind of a a puppet in the puppet show. So whoever represents Mars, um, who you're feeling like is not accessible, who uh, is is not being straightforward with you, this actually more accurately describes the presence of Neptune in the fourth house. So the, what I'm suggesting here is there's a lot of projection that is going on and, and it is possible for you to, in a, in a sense, disown your own reality of Neptune in the fourth house and say this kind of background or ground and the fourth house is a perfect concept of ground, right? Because it is the ground that you stand on, symbolically speaking. And then with Mars moving through there, th there is this illusion of a figure. There, there is this um, puppet, basically, that appears on the stage of your life that can seem to be the cause of everything going on when really it's more like a result of what's going on with you and encouraging you uh, to be much more sensitive uh, to, to your own inner state and to understand that your inner state is your responsibility regardless of uh, whether you know you know there is someone else kind of contributing to what really is your internal situation. Now, one of the one of the best things about your chart right now is that in in your most creative and dynamic house, the fifth. Let's add some extra planets here because things have changed since I did this uh, these charts in December. Um, Nope, wrong side. This this is sort of like the the instant dyslexia reverse <laughs> reverse camera. It's like okay, it's not even a true mirror. Everything's completely the the glyphs are all backwards. So um, this is Aries here. This this house right this middle one here. And look at all that stuff in there. And as someone born under a fire sign, Sag, the very next fire sign that follows yours is going to be one of the things you have the closest affinity with. It's going to feel sympathetic. It's going to resonate with you. And, and that is what makes that fire-to-fire -fire connection 
into a mode of expression um, called a trine. So when we come up with the concept of a trine, yes, it's 120 degrees more or less, but the other thing that's 120 degrees more or less is the fire to fire connection of Sagittarius to Aries. And so this casts a whole new light on the ridiculous house system debates and whether whole sign houses really work and all of all of that stuff to remember that inside the idea of using whole signs as houses is also the idea of the aspect and the aspect of going from Sag to Aries is a trine and a trine is a use it or lose it type of expressive gift. You have a, an ease of creative expression and also having Aries there makes it very much a, about um, the, the place where you do your self-actualization. So I don't know your what you consider you know your status as a an artist or a creative person and, and a lot of people feel a lot less creative than they are of course they may not be motivated to go through all the steps right it's a lot easier to click on spotify than it is to learn how to play the guitar it's easier to click on spotify than it is to learn how to play one note on the guitar um however um you, you live in a perpetual state of these opportunities being open, fire to fire, and then having Aries there, there's an inherent drive to self-actualization that overlays in your chart with the most creative, expressive, and dynamic house, the fifth. So you are a natural, regardless of what you think your level of talent is, you, you will find that any form of a personally expressive work where there is some risk involved, right? It's not, the fifth house will not include hanging wallpaper, for example. 